What is being widely reported as a freak accident in a hockey game, which is, again, um, kind of harkens back to whenever I hear sports journalists want to talk about freak accidents that happened on the field. Remember Damar Hamlin? Freak accident hit, right? And then he doesn't want to talk about what ended up happening at the end of the day. We'll just move right on, of course. But no, Adam Johnson, 29, 29, year old, 29 years old, man. He used to play for the Pet, or Pittsburgh Penguins. He was over there playing in the UK, playing some ice hockey over there. And yeah, he ended up... Ah, man, just a catastrophic injury. He, he got his neck sliced, which is always a danger, okay? And that's always why they te when they teach you the ABCs, when you're coming up through the extensive, okay? Extensive developmental program. If he is indeed Canadian, which most NHL players are, let's keep it a buck. You are always told to keep your feet on the ice, keep your skates downward, but you're always taught that those are dangerous and they can cut you. Hell, there was a, a goaltender uh, a couple of years ago. There was a yeah, a really horrific clip. Of, fortunately enough, he did survive, unlike Adam Johnson. But that was in a scrummage right in front of the net. The whole bunch of things were going on at that time. That was an absolute freak accident. But the way that the journalists are trying to report this, because, well, Matt Petgrave was the guy whose skate ended up making contact with Adam Johnson's neck, which I'm not going to show the clip. If you're on social media, you're going to see the clip that's out there. I've got something that'll go all the way up until any sort of blood starts to make it onto the ice because, yeah, unfortunately, we've seen that far too much, or at least I have. But I just want to give you a full context on this one because, as a lot of people are pointing out, um, yeah, yeah well, I got my opinions on it, okay? But yes, uh, here's here's some of the context, okay? NHL player, well, I guess ex-NHL player, Adam Johnson, 29, died on live television after Matt Petgrave slashed his throat with his skate. He didn't, like, go up to him, you know, like that uh, old Robin Williams joke where he just took off his skate like a Puerto Rican hockey player and just started to cut him up, okay? That wasn't the case at all. It's pretty close, though. Petgrave has a history of bad behavior in the EIHL. At the Quebec Junior League, I think so. I think so. I think so. Uh, racking up the most penalty minutes in 2022-2023 season and getting booted out of games. Now, okay, without doing a deep dive into this stuff, okay, there was a position, okay, at least when I paid attention to hockey and, you know, me being an old head going back and revisiting history. Like, there's the goon. There's the goon on hockey teams, you know, just your third or fourth liner that goes out there that makes sure that order is maintained on the ice through very physical means. Like, there's legendary examples that are out there. You have Dave Tiger Williams, if you want to be a super old head. You know, Dave Semenko, who was running cover for Wayne Gretzky when he was playing for the Oilers, all the way up to the guys that I remember in the likes of Donald Brashear, who also happened to be black. Which also, you know, pet grave is, which is why journalists are just running an absurd amount to cover for him. I mean, come on, can you make it any more fucking obvious? But yeah, Donald Brashear, who's uh, also black, did the exact same stuff, okay, was an enforcer as well. George LaRock, probably the most famous late 90s, early 2000s enforcer. Uh, or also save Ty Domi, okay, Ty Domi with the Toronto Maple Leafs, you know, both probably on equal footing. But George LaRock was beloved in being from northern Alberta, okay, even though I was an Oilers fan, still not an Oilers fan, but having that team getting an absurd amount of coverage in my neck of the woods, there was nobody, that, those were, uh, that was awesome. On those teams that had more of a fan base than George LaRock, okay? Because he was a tough guy. He played the game exceptionally well. He would take no shit from anybody. Didn't matter if you were bigger, smaller, tougher, stronger, faster than him. He would do his job to the fullest, and his jersey sales were up there with the likes of Mike Comrie, Doug Waite, and all the other stars in the pre Connor McDavid. Oilers teams and no this isn't a race thing at all I just named off a bunch of equivalent enforcers if this is in fact this guy's role for you know racking up so many penalty minutes because yeah that's what happens with enforcers they go out there and they you know they throw the stiff hits and then they also get into fights as well which could also lead you to getting booted out of games so that totally makes sense okay or you know historically speaking some of the more beloved players in history, like you have Grant Fuhr. Okay, a lot of the shit that he did that was overlooked and during those, you know, dynastic Oilers periods in the 80s. My personal favorite player, okay, because I'm a Calgary Flames fan, Jerome McGinley. You have Wayne Simmons that's out there in the league as well. Evander Kane and all of his fucking shenanigans getting bounced from the Sabres, the Sharks. I, I think he plays for the Oilers now. Like that fucker's everywhere and he's been given more opportunities than a pretty white girl. So no, 
all of your regular defenses aren't going to wash here. The media quickly declared it was a total accident, but many viewers and uh, expert hockey players are not convinced. And while, yeah, I didn't play ice hockey, fuck, I can't even skate at all. Something that never appealed to me whatsoever. Also because, well, I just got this natural anti-authoritarian streak in me, so whenever I see something get an undue amount of coverage, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, do the opposite. So to give you a little bit more context, and I don't know why Val Venus, Val Venus of all people, has a little bit more context to the clip, and I'm not going to play it all. All I'm going to do is just go ahead and show you what happened beforehand and what happened when the contact was made. And Well, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, it really is, yeah, mm-hmm. So as you can see right here, it's not like, it's not like our guy out here was thrown off balance, okay? It's not like he got hip checked and his feet ended up over his chin. No, 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 okay? He was specifically trying to make contact. That's what I'm thinking, man. He stuck out his leg in order to try to trip him and then got a little bit carried away. That's what I'm thinking right there. Ends up slashing his feet and I'm just trying to keep this as grainy as possible. I'll have a link to all of the different videos if you're so inclined to go watch it. But no, man, that's just somebody who's coming over trying to do his job, trying to get on top of the puck right there, throwing his leg up way too fucking high. Way, way, way too high. Because there is absolutely no excuse that you should be throwing what was easily perceived to be a kick like that. No, 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 man. Not when you're running around with literal knives on your feet. Absolutely not. And even though that I've been abreast of hockey culture for as long as I can remember... You don't have to take my junior analysis of it. You could probably take probably the last great goon that was ever in the NHL. I don't even know if that position still exists. I've been out of the game for a very long time. But Sean Avery, Sean Avery, legendary troll in the NHL. Just taking a look at the Adam Johnson dying after taking a skate blade to the neck. Do I think he was trying to make contact or yeah, of some sort? Absolutely. Do I think he woke up in the morning and says, I'm going to murder somebody today? No, that's where I'm at. Okay. He definitely did something untowards to Adam Johnson. And 1000% he is responsible for that death that he caused. Was it intentional? Probably not. Okay. I don't think I've done a little bit of sleuthing in order to figure out if he had, like, I don't know, he had a gambling debt or something like that. He ended up fucking Petgrave's ex girlfriend or something like that. Like, no, I can't see anything like that. He was just a reckless asshole. And now, well, it just kind of looks like he's going to end up paying the price, which kind of seems fair. If we're going to be completely honest. British police open up an investigation into death of hockey player Adam Johnson, who was killed by opposing, or opposing player's skate blade. Say that 10 times fast. Now, British police locked, or launched an investigation on Saturday evening, which remains ongoing, into the death of hockey player Adam Johnson, who had his neck slit open by an opposing player's skate. During Saturday's game between Sheffield, Ste or Sheffield Steelers and Nottingham Panthers, the latter of which Minnesota native Johnson... Oh, okay, so he was born in Minnesota. Okay, makes sense. Um, played for South Yorkshire, police responded to reports that a player had been seriously injured. But yeah, even my description of the extensive junior hockey program, like you go through that exact same stuff, especially if you make it to the league like that. It's no different than football in the States when it comes to hockey, okay? Because you start with peewees. Like I had friends growing up in the school from the time that they could walk, from the time that they could even go to grade school, they were already in very intensive hockey or programs okay one of my best friends growing up was a goaltender and yo man every single week like there was a very rare opportunity that we could hang out on the weekends that he yeah wasn't playing a game saturday or sunday man yeah sleepovers if we ever could have them would have to be saturday night going into sunday because yeah saturday was always game day the whole year round like hockey's a religion in canada same thing with football in the united states as far as i can tell Officers attended the scene, oh yeah, attended along uh, the scene. Sorry, alongside other emergency services, and one man, aged in his twenties, was taken to hospital with seriously or er, serious injuries. And sadly, he was later pronounced deceased at the hospital. Our officers remained at the scene, carrying out inquiries, and our investigation into the circumstances surrounding the incident remains ongoing. Now, we would encourage the public to avoid speculation regarding the incident while we continue inquiries. Johnson, who played for NHL's yes, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins before being transferred to the Elite Ice Hockey League in August. Okay, so do they have some kind of uh, Euro a European developmental system? Is that what we're doing? Okay, in August, collided with opposing team member Matt Petgrave during the game. Well, it wasn't so much that he collided with Petgrave. It's more like Petgrave 
trying to initiate contact, um, receiving a skate blade to the neck when Petgrave kicked his leg up. Johnson immediately fell to the ice, blood quickly appearing around him. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to show the rest of that stuff, because you don't need to see a pool of blood on the ice in order to get the point across. Johnson was transported to a nearby hospital and was pronounced dead the next morning. He has a lot of blood very quickly because, you know, the neck kind of transfers a lot of blood. Now, while some have maintained that it was a freak accident, the media, as a result of the often a rough sport, you don't see that. You don't. You, it's literally something that does not happen. You might get a bit, okay, in a scrum in the corner or something like that. If somebody goes down, try to cover up a puck, you might get your hands stepped on or something like that, but that's why you wear gloves. If you get a little bit of exposed skin, you might get nicked up. That could be a problem. Outside of the one freak accident around the goaltender's net, I can't think of another case where you have a freak accident like this occur. Because, you know what, there's a general gentleman's agreement that nobody's going to be flopping around like a fish, like they're out there on the soccer pitch throwing their legs up in the air in order to try to draw a penalty you understand the danger inherent that is wrapped around everybody's feet you try to keep your feet on the ice so that you don't cause additional injuries some people though like to think that they can just go ahead and act all willy-nilly by flailing around and this is the ultimate extrapolation of this this is the end game for activities like this what's ultimately going to end up happening well it's just like all visors started to become mandatory well hell like i said before like even being an old head and it somehow works its way back around to the Edmonton Oilers. But Craig McTavish, the longtime GM, has long since been gone as well. He was the last guy in the league to not wear a helmet because they ended up getting mandated. Christ almighty, there was a point in time where goaltenders didn't even have to wear a mask. Hockey's fucking wild back in the cut. It's become bitched up before, beyond all recognition. I would lay the blame strictly at Sidney Crosby's feet, but that's another discussion for another time. But then I forget the instigating point when everybody had to just start... Er, had to start wearing visors it was probably because somebody ended up taking a puck to the teeth because somebody was being reckless blocking a shot or somebody was swinging their stick where they shouldn't be swinging their stick and now because of this i'd imagine they're probably gonna have to start wearing neck protectors and goaltenders have for a very long time but now we're probably gonna see more neck protection not necessarily a bad thing but when you start to make her mandate all of this stuff how far how far are we gonna have to go because what's the joke in the NFL? How long before we start to have a soft transition towards flag football? It's a slippery slope, something that you've been very acutely aware of if you've been a sports fan for long enough. One post on Reddit. Oh my God, here comes some, a bre <laughs> some real brainiac assessments. If you seriously think Matt Peckrave murdered Adam Johnson, go fuck yourself. The guy was bawling his eyes out in the ice and in the dressing room. It probably still is right now. Yeah, exactly. I think murdered... I don't think anybody thinks that he murdered him. Like Sean Avery put it, I don't think he woke up in the morning and go, I'm going to go out there on the ice today and kill somebody. Absolutely not. Probably feels like absolute shit. But then again, you're flailing around with sharp edges on your feet. The fuck did you expect to happen, man? Something bad was going to happen. Post later added, his foot clearly clipped the skate of another player. It didn't, causing him to lose balance. And no, to flail around like an asshole like that is not the response that you have. You just go ahead and... If you're trying to take out the opponent and you lose balance like that, you know what you do? You get as flat as possible to try to cover as much ground, okay? You don't start to move your feet up in the air like that. That is something that you're taught from a very young age not to do. I can't reiterate that enough. So even if he did kick his leg out, he had very little control over where his leg was going. No, as it, like I don't have a lot of room in the my little studio right here, but obviously to kick your foot up to where a guy is, you know, got his head down, you know, stick handling the puck. You got to move that motherfucker up about five feet. If you have no control over your limbs going five feet in the air, you got some problems. And you probably shouldn't be a professional athlete if you have that little bodily control. But again, this is some asshole on Reddit. It was a deliberate cheap shot from a dirty player with the most penalty minutes in the league. But again, that can be explained if, you know, depending on his position. Notably, this is not the first death to occur as a result of another player's blade. In 2022, Connecticut high school player, 10th grader Teddy Balkind was rushed, or rushed to the hospital after his neck was split open by a skate blade. He was pronounced dead at the hospital, according to the New York Post. Buffalo Sabres goaltender, yeah, Clint, or Clint Malarchuk, there we go, had a similar injury in 1989, but miraculously survived. Florida Panthers player Richard Zednick was also hit in the neck. Yeah. Oh, that was, uh, I think it was a clearing opportunity on a penalty kill or something like that. That was fucking gnarly too. 
But yeah, man, hockey hockey at its best is a fucking brilliant sport, but at its bitched up worse, well, you just end up getting prima donnas acting out like this. I don't think that Petgrave deliberately did this, but I think a police investigation is likely warranted in an involuntary manslaughter charge. Very likely, or at least it should be, because somebody died at the end of the day, okay? If you just chalk it up to the sport, that just uh, it doesn't fit, man. It really doesn't. My sincerest condolences to the Johnson family. Freak accident or not, man. Losing a son, losing a 29-year-old son. That's tough, man. That is really fucking tough. And even still, even still, I feel bad for Matt Peckrave. Even though he was being a reckless asshole, he still has it on his conscience that he ended up killing somebody, even as inadvertently as it does seem right now. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.